Blake with the Three Hand Hunter channel and thanks for joining me today. You know, in front of you, you you're gonna see several Seiko legacy divers. Um, some of them are older, some of them are newer, but overall, this is some of their legacy type of collections, some of their classic divers. And I wanted to bring them to your attention because right now we're dealing in an environment where prices are going up on almost everything that we are dealing with, whether it's you know energy costs or housing costs or whatever it might be. You even look at watches, watches are getting more expensive, but these legacy Seiko divers really provide great value. And I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about some of these because to be honest, these are some of the best values out there. I, I know you can get a micro brand and micro brand watches are great. I, I Look, I'm wearing one right now. I've got an Obris Morgan, love it. But Seiko has heritage, a lot of it. And these watches are highly regarded, becoming more and more respectable by the day. The, the up and coming Grand Seiko lines have really made a splash with high horology folks or, or watch enthusiasts in general. So Seiko, Seikos are really starting to get especially over the last several years, a lot more respect in the watch world and community. And I don't think they should be overlooked. And I think that you can get great values. And I'm holding right now the Seiko Sumo. And this one, well, it's actually the Blumo. This is the blue version of the Seiko Sumo. And I wanted to go through these and just kind of give you a quick look and overview of them and why I think they're just such great value watches. Um, you'll notice all of mine are on NATO straps. I love to wear NATOs. This is actually a two-piece uh, NATO. I'll talk about that when I, when I show it to you. Um, but I wanted to bring these watches to your attention because I think they are great values and they're original designs and they're beautiful timepieces. Some of them you know, have better uh, features and, 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 and specs, if you will, than others. But overall, they're just great watches. If you've never owned a Seiko or you're looking at them, I think you should take a hard look at them because they're, they're great watches. So this is my Seiko Sumo. Now this one is a little bit bigger. It, 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 it registers about 44 millimeters, uh, from side to side, you know, and the, in the, um, the lug distance is going to be bigger. I've done a I've done a full review on this watch, and it's a really great watch. But you can see, whoops, uh, let me let me <laughs> change the uh, the there we go. I had to change the measurement there. So this is a, a 52 millimeter lug distance, and it's got 20 millimeter lug width. So it does wear pretty far across your wrist, but the way the case is shaped. See those turned down lugs? It wears beautifully. It's a fairly thin watch too for, for uh, you know, this Seiko, classic Seiko diver. I mean, mine mine's about 13, almost 14 millimeters, but I also have a, this one's been modded out. It has a sapphire crystal put into it because they usually come with hard legs. Um, but this has a 50 hour power reserve. This is the 6R15 and this is a great movement overall wonderful watch. And the reason why I can bring these to your attention is because I'm going to show you some clips on eBay and show you some of the sold prices and some of the prices that are available for some of these watches. But you can actually pick up a Seiko Sumo or a Blumo for 400, maybe less on auction on some used from, from uh, on a used watch. And these are great, great classic Seiko divers and they have that Seiko look and the beveling on the case and the finishing on the Sumo is out of all of these watches would be my favorite because it's so beautiful. The facets and the polishings and it is, it's just gorgeous. The turn, if you notice the lugs, notice how they turn in right here a little bit, kind of like an Omega. So really beautiful design on the Seiko Sumo. So that's one that you really need to take a look at. Next one I wanna show you is the Seiko Stargate. Now the Seiko Stargate, this is a, a, an original design from Seiko as well. It's very similar to the Sumo. I, I actually matched on this particular review that I did on the Seiko Stargate, Stargate, I matched up these two watches and you can see the case shapes are fairly similar. Um, this is also 44 millimeter, but in, like this asymmetric type of case, which is really, really cool. Almost like a turtle, which you know, you'll know you see here in just a moment. Now, 
this is a little bit smaller because the lug distance, and I'm going to show you the lug to lug here is I think 49. It's like 49. So it's going to wear like a Sumo, but not as far across. It actually wears more like a Seiko SKX. And by the way, you'll notice that I don't have an SKX with me, but the, this model number is the SKZ323. And these Seiko Stargates, they are a little unique. You look at the bezel and look at how the bezel is thin. And you notice on the Sumo, you got this Reese's peanut butter cup type of, uh, uh, of uh, bezel, but on the Stargate, you got this really super thin bezel, which is really cool. And you know, one of the key features is this, this little pip marker that's at the very top. It's like a Breitling, how Breitling has them on all fours. Well, this has like that Stargate looking one from the show or the movie, some of you might remember. But this Seiko Stargate is actually a pretty cool watch and you can get these at great deals. This is the first generation. The second generation has a different crystal because it has a Cyclops, but this is a hard Lex crystal. Now, a lot of people disregard some of these older movements because this is the 7S36 movement, which there's no hacking or hand whiting. But you get you have to do that Seiko, Seiko shuffle, get it started. But sometimes I really like that, especially when I'm on the go. My watches are not cost certified. You know, maybe some of them are, but uh, well, actually a couple of them are, but that doesn't matter. Most of my watches are going to be off by a few seconds, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe 12, maybe two seconds a day. So after I wear my watch once or once for one or two days, it doesn't matter. The seconds are always off anyway. So getting a roundabout figure, it's not a big deal to me. I, I'm not, I'm not as big of a stickler on making sure that my, my timing is to the second, right? But this is a cool watch. It's a watch that you can get some of them on those Stargates, you can find in the two, three hundred dollar range. They're really great finds if you can get them. Now, I want to talk a little bit. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the Samurai just yet. I'm going to talk about this turtle. Turtles are a dime a dozen. And I've owned several turtles over the years. This is also a 44 millimeter case. It's a little bigger, but it doesn't wear like a 44 millimeter because the lug distance is I want to say about 46 or 47, 47 and a half millimeters. So it's that cushion style case, super comfortable on the wrist because of the way that you get these, these cutouts, super comfortable. Same with the Sumo. Notice how you get those cutouts um, underneath the cases. See it right here? Super comfortable to wear on the wrist. All, you'll notice that the three of these have four o'clock crowns, which make them really comfortable. So that crown doesn't dig into your, uh, into the top of your hand when you bend back your hand. So the turtles are great. This particular model, it's getting a little bit more rare. This is the SRP 787. It's the Batman. This one has been modified. You'll notice it has been modified. The Stargate has not been modified. The Stargate is all original with original crystal. This does have a dome sapphire crystal on it. Okay. And then also it's got a custom, this is a Nomoki bezel and it's got a, I can't remember which bezel <laughs> insert right off the top of my head, but this is a LCBI, Loom Ceramic Bezel Insert, which matter of fact, they don't even carry this one in, at least not right now. Last I looked, this wasn't in stock, but this is a really cool watch. And like I said, I've owned several uh, turtles and I always, try to keep one in my collection because they are so dang comfortable. They are very comfortable on the wrist, but this one, what makes it really unique is it's got that blue, you know, minute handset for timing, for dive timing. Really cool. And also I'm going to show you something really neat. If you notice the date and day wheel, the day wheel is a Roman numeral day wheel. So V five Friday. It's pretty, pretty neat. What a classic watch. The Seiko Turtles, you can find all the, there's a huge line in so many different, so many different colorways, but these watches you can still find in the $300 range at the time of filming. You know, when watch prices are going up almost across the board, you can still find a lot of these legacy Seiko classic original design divers at such great values. Now, the last watch I wanted to show you is my favorite 
of these four Seikos that you see here. This is the Seiko Samurai first generation SNM033. Now, these are hard to find. And if you can find one in decent condition like this, it's gonna run you probably around five or 600 US dollars right now, maybe a little bit more, okay? This, this has the 7S26 or 7S3, I think it's 26 movement. It is the like the old SKX movement. There is no uh, hand winding. There is no hacking. Uh, I've always thought about upgrading this this uh, movement. This is also modded, not modded anything but the crystal. It's got a domed sapphire crystal, which I love on this watch. The clarity of the dial. You'll notice this um, the, uh, the 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 honeycomb pattern. Uh, if you will, or that, you know, it's very similar to the the uh, strap code two-piece NATO that I'm wearing on it. You'll notice it is a really cool dial and it's got a really unique handset too, different from a lot of other Samurais, but I'm going to do an in-depth detailed review of the Samurai because these have to be seen. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about like the the very first, this is the first generation uh, Samurai, but even before these, the titanium, titanium versions came out and those are really expensive. They, they run in a thousand, maybe, you know, $900 to $1,200 range. Uh, but they are titanium, titanium bracelets. I have actually the full bracelet here with this watch, but it does have, um, on the bracelet, it's got uh, polished mid links, uh, center links. And I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that look. But I wanna show you just a few of the details with this watch really quick before I go into a full review. What you're gonna notice with these Samurais is they are smaller than the current version that's out right now. The current ones are 44 millimeter. These are 42, you know, 42 and a half, 42.8 um, millimeters. They are smaller and this particular Samurai what you're gonna notice is there's no crown guards, which is another unique feature of this particular version. But I'm bringing, it, it, bringing this to your attention because the new Samurais, which I have owned, I've owned one, it does wear a little bit bigger, but they're still great, great watches and overall wonderful values. Now, a couple other things that I wanted to show you regarding the Samurai. Do you notice how sharp these edges are? It's the way that they've been machined and also um, brushed finished on the side. You can see a combination of polishing and brush, but the way that they've finished these and they put the, um, notice the little, uh, notice the little, uh, not DLC, it's the, um, oh geez, what's the coating that they do here? The black ion, ion plating that they put on there. Really nice feature and um, you know distinction between the older Samurais and the newer ones. But this watch is out of all of these legacy divers, still a really good, I mean, I still think they're a great value. You, if you can find one of these in the 500 range uh, without you know the crystal, you put on a crystal for another 50 bucks, you got an original Seiko classic diver that are very hard to find nowadays and offer great value. Like I said, in today's market, we're dealing with higher prices across the board, almost on everything, but you can still find some very good values in these classic Seiko divers. So I did want to show you today because I think a lot of us get, you know, you look at the prices of watches now and you're like, man, that's discouraging. But in all actuality, there's still some great values, especially with Seiko, with a brand that's got so much heritage and they're so well built. And if you can find them, try them. If you're a watch enthusiast like me, if you're a watch hunter like me, I'm always hunting for you know, the next greatest thing. I'm always trying to try out different watches that I think offer great value. And by the way, if you like content like that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's free to subscribe. And if you like this content, please give me a thumbs up. That'd be great. It definitely helps the channel. And if and what else really helps the channel is if you comment on any watches, any Seiko legacy divers that you have that I didn't cover, because I obviously there's a huge line with Seiko, 
but there's a lot of divers out there that are Seiko divers that are classics, that are original designs that you can find at a relatively good price right now. So guys, if you've made it this far, let me introduce myself once again. My name is Blake. I'm a bit of a watchaholic. And if you've made it this far, I'm pretty sure you are one too. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.